This is Per Lars Hans, Director of Sustainability at Rangzels, a family-owned third-generation company that collects, treats and recycles waste and residual products from businesses, organizations and households. Per is an award winner in communication, social sustainability and entrepreneurship, listed multiple times by Trust Across America as one of the top thought leaders in Trust. He is the current appointed expert for setting environmental targets for sea and coastal regions in Sweden and for the Coalition Group for a Climate Neutral Swedish Industry by 2045. Warm welcome to the studio and the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Katarina. Uh, in my speech today, I will try to highlight our potential to contribute to two of the COP, upcoming COP conference two priorities, that is adaptation and mitigation. But first, rank cells originate from 1881, when we were a transport company, transporting goods and people with horses. In the 1960s, we became a waste management company, and today, in the, in the, in the linear economy, we are a recycler. But tomorrow, as Lars mentioned in his initial speech, we will become a raw material producer, but also a detoxifier, and that is very important going forward. 50% of our emissions, our, our greenhouse gas emissions, originates from the fossil fuels that we use to transport ourselves or how, power our houses or our industries. The other 50% are embedded in the products that we use every day, the eat that we consume and the infrastructure that we use. If we would like to reach the ambitions in the Paris Agreement, we must also create circular materials loops, and that will be crucial going forward. And by that, we also need to change processes in the society. We can't just replace the energy, we need to have new processes in place. The solutions that we put on the market need to fulfill three criteria. The first, we need to make sure that we recycle back as much material as possible so that we can reduce the need for virgin production somewhere else. Secondly, decontamination. We can't loop around everything that we put into the ecosystem. We need to have a way of taking out the nasty stuff. And thirdly, of course, we shouldn't put any hindrances to future generations. And here we talk about the climate issue as well as other environmental challenges. Let, let us now cover some of the processes in the world that we need to change. And I will start with the nitrogen cycle. Today, when we produce nitrogen fertilizer, we do that through the Haber-Bosch method that received a Nobel Prize in, in 1918. It means that we incinerate natural gas, take it down from the atmosphere, use it, and then it ends up in our wastewater. Now we need to take it out of the wastewater, because if we don't do that, it will lead, uh, risk to lead to eutrophication. And that in the end, if I go very far away from now, can lead to that our seas and oceans go from today's huge carbon sink to become even carbon emitters. So the nitrogen must go on, on, uh, out. Today we do that through biological methods, where we take out nitrogen up to the atmosphere, but also have a huge leakage of, uh, of laughing gases. And, and this, is, uh, this means that the whole nitrogen cycle is a huge carbon emitter. Here we have developed solutions where we can extract the nitrogen directly from the wastewater and directly produce fertilizer. We don't need to bypass the atmosphere. Uh, we will launch this next September in a huge, a huge uh, uh, fair in, in Copenhagen. And here we do see a huge global potential because the cost to implement this will be lower than today's technology. At the same time, it will be a climate negative uh, solution in the end. The problem though is that the nitrogen that we produce are we not allowed to use today because, in, because the, today's legislation, the, the, there, if you're gonna use something, it depends on origin and not the quality. And if it has been waste, it is banned. Another process that I would like to highlight and I'd like to zoom out is not just the nitrogen. I would like to zoom out to the, 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 the wastewater treatment plants. In here we have together with the Swedish Water, we together with the food industry, WWF and others, launched uh, seven principles that we like to be implemented in society, where wastewater treatment plant will become resource plant in the future. Again, the system are set up to hinder that, so we need to change 
not just in Sweden. We need to change in almost all countries around the world. But that, if that is given a, as a possibility, we see that, that, that this will really re re be able then to, that the wastewater treatment plant become, will become carbon reducers. Let us now move into an example, a third example from us, and that is from Estonia, where we, by adding carbon dioxide to ash mountains, we be able to produce new resources. So let us take out to a small film. 22 million tons of calcium carbonate is mined worldwide. So we could buy the simplest everyday items, from food products to paints. Unfortunately, the mining and producing of precipitated calcium carbonate is resulting in a huge amount of greenhouse gas emissions. Did you know that there are ash deposits holding about 600 million tonnes of ash from electric power production in Estonia? Out of all of that, only 1% has been reused over time. Laboratory and industrial scale experiments show that we can produce tailor-made, high-quality precipitated calcium carbonate according to the client's need. First time ever, we have an opportunity to produce climate-neutral precipitated calcium carbonate. We do not need to open new mines or burn anything. We are extracting calcium using water-based leaching, but it's very important our technology is based on zero liquid discharge. All the water is in constant circulation. What is even more important, the extracted calcium is bonded with the external CO2. This means that our production is capturing more carbon than emitting. This makes our product very unique. Dragon Cell's OSA project is a unique example on how to capture CO2 into products with a long life cycle and use them as a material instead of treating them as waste. Several European companies that are using precipitated calcium carbonate have shown great interest in our product and want to use it in their production. One good example is Kealan, window profile manufacturer from Germany. In cooperation with them, we could capture and utilize CO2 in their products. We believe that our project has a potential of becoming the biggest European-based circular economy solution. Our project will help us to achieve the goals set in the Paris Agreement and lead the way into circular-based economy. The potential for this single project in Estonia will mean that we can reduce the carbon emissions emitted on the globe with 400 million tons of carbon dioxide oxide equivalents, and that is the same amount as eight years of Sweden as a nation's total carbon emissions. At the same time, we can avoid digging up limestone to the same equivalent as 200 years of production needed for the cement production in the world. There are many good examples around in the world. We will later on listen to two of the industries where I really appreciate their efforts, and that is, that is uh, Tarket and uh, Saint-Gobain they have decided to mine their future resources from the construction material that are already in our buildings. And that's exactly what we need to see happening. Making sure that we can enable new resources to be avoided to be digging up if we can. So uh, looking forward to listening to the, all other good examples uh, in the next hour to come. And uh, let's create a market for circular material flows. Then we'll be able to really reduce the carbon emissions. And uh, I will answer any questions through the app. Thank you very much, Per Larsons. You'll be back shortly for a panel talk.